Hello, my name is Scott Nussbaum, and I'm a Principal Security Consultant at TrustedSec. This video will demonstrate how clear text and encrypted passwords can be retrieved from Chrome's LastPass browser extension. This attack has also been tested against Brave extensions. To locate and access the passwords, we focus on scanning the application's memory for user data. LastPass does not consider this to be a vulnerability because the attacker must already have access to the system running the LastPass browser extension. This video will walk through steps of identifying processes that contain passwords and how long they remain in memory. We will begin with a fresh reboot and a new Chrome page. Each Chrome process will be iterated through to prove that no sensitive data is identifiable at this point. Next, we will log into LastPass and iterate through this uh, process IDs again. This time, trying to again, I trying to identify any sensitive data that is corresponded to those uh, process ID. Next, we'll open the ex LastPass extensions dashboard and use LastPass buffs to dump the uh, process ID secrets. At this point, we will verify that the captured passwords match the passwords in the dashboard, including the secure password that requires a master password to unlock it even in the dashboard. Next, we'll log out of the extensions and capture the process ID secrets again. Please note that these passwords and encrypted passwords are stored in memory while in use. And when not in use, they remain until the browser overwrites them with new data. So we're going to start off with the first case of the browser being closed and LastPass extension being logged out. We currently do have the connection open uh, for the Cobalt Strike, as you can see on the right hand side. We just rebooted the system, so it's a fresh start. All right, we're opening up the, a Chrome browser. LastPass extension is installed, but as you can see, it's logged out. Next step of what we're going to do is then run the LastPass uh, boff command from the uh, Cobalt Strike against process IDs for the Chrome browser, just to prove that there's really nothing in memory at this moment. So LastPass will be running. It will take a few uh, seconds to run, depending on the how much memory is used by the Chrome browsers and how many process IDs you give. The runtime of this can vary. Once you find which process ID uh, contains the information for the LastPass, normally you can just run that process ID in the future and it will uh, reduce the time. Okay, the output that we see at the top, we see a bunch of information that comes back. This is the raw data that's being returned by the LastPass buff. It is then processed on the back end by a Python file that will then try to pull out some of the false positives. And in this case, we see this user config false positive as well as this master password false positive. Um, to go back for further information, this data that's being printed out here is stored at this uh, long path. The next step we're going to do is then actually log into the LastPass browser extension, but we're not going to open the actual vault itself. As you can see, we're now logged into the LastPass browser extension. And we're going to run the same command that we just did with the same process IDs. So similar to last time, we can see that we got more information that scrolled across the screen. Um, again, this is uh, written out to this LastPass timestamp. So if you want to go back and actually look at it in more depth, some of the things that you'll see uh, across this will be well, let me scroll to the top and we'll work our way down. Again, at the top, you'll see the raw data that's coming back um, and then the process data. So the last pass return value will indicate when the process data is being displayed. The first number here is the process ID that was identified as containing this information. The PWD mem object is a list of items that were scraped from memory. This was an unformatted blob of data that was inside memory that was identified. The ID associates with an AID number that we'll show you in a, a few minutes. Uh, we also give you the username, the password, a fixed password, which generally just a lowercase version of the password, a domain, which isn't always correct, or the real domain, and a link. As you can see, we picked up a number of these passwords. Um, next, it will scrape looking for uh, J this JSON file that will exist inside memory. The JSON file will have this AID number, which will correspond with the number above. 
Um, this will also contain a lot more information about each of these entries. Uh, the first one does not, it's pretty much an empty one. Uh, let's get down to this one. Uh, it will show you like the encrypted name as well as the decrypted name, encrypted group as well as the decrypted group, the URL associated with it. If there's extra as far as notes, that will be showed as far as the encrypted values. Uh, username and password are encrypted, but it gives you a lot more information about each of these entries. Uh, this entry, let's say the uh, 843, last three digits, we'll go find this above. So here we are, 843. See how this ID number associates with the ID, AID before? And here is your uh, decrypted value. Uh, Billy Bob 143878 is the username and the password. Uh, this is a fake password, and it's for Facebook. Now that we show that what we can scrape out by just being logged into LastPass browser extension, uh, we'll actually open up the vault and verify the data. So one thing to note that the data that came back, some of the uh, fake bank and the credit card information did not uh, return uh, with the scraper, but other things such as the shared servers and social media did get re returned. Um, we'll start off by checking out the uh, Twitter. We can start off with Billy Bob Troublemaker. As we can see over on the right, it's associated with Billy Bob Troublemaker. And we can see some fake password. Did you see it? Facebook, we already talked about a little bit with the Billy Bob 143878. And this is a fake password. We can see the HRO3 is labeled as being a warning because it has a weak password. And over on the right, we can see the HR ad, uh, admin HR with password labeled as the HR server. One thing we did note is the note is not visible inside the scrape. Next we'll check file 01. So file 01 was actually, there's a setting inside LastPass uh, browser extensions that will allow you to require that the master password is inputted again when you want to see certain values. And this one's for file 01, admin 01, and it's a super secret password. As you can notice that the uh, protection that they put in place does not actually protect it in memory. And the final one we'll check is the DC01. Again, it's admin01. Bet you couldn't guess this is the password. So for the next one, we're going to close the vault tab, but leave the browser open to see what's still available in memory. And in this, for this case, we're only going to run the process ID that we saw the last pass data in. In this case, it was 936. As you can see, that comes back significantly faster. Again, we still end up with uh, a false positive in this case for the uh, password field. The password field occasionally will come back with actual passwords, but they will not be associated with certain usernames. Uh, the private key is used in LastPass itself to decrypt some of the uh, hash values that come back to give you uh, certain other keys that will be used. So then we have the uh, user config. The user config will store a lot of sensitive data about the current user. So we can scroll to the top of the user config. Uh, it will have like push servers, private keys, uh, cached. Uh, some of the more interesting things come down, it will show you like along here, different types of out of band or if you have multi-factor enabled and what type of multi-factor is enabled. Uh, it will give you the usernames, the email addresses that they're currently using. But as you can see, even though the tab has been closed, uh, you, all this information is still available in memory. Next, we're going to demonstrate closing off the current Chrome browser and opening a new one while still having LastPass logged in. Um, again, for this one, we're going to have to put in each of the different process IDs for Chrome because we don't know which one might be holding the information at this point. And in this case, it will come back with some of the information from the user config and the private key, but not a lot of the other information is available this way. So we opened up and closed or the vault so that we can get a little more information in memory.
We're going to then log out while keeping the browser open. We'll be running the same command that we just did. Let's double check to make sure the process IDs are there. The same. The process IDs can also be obtained with inside uh, Cobalt Strike by just running a PS command. Um, for the demonstrations, I'm just using the uh, task manager. So as we can see, this uh, pulled a bunch of information out of the dashboard. Uh, the password at the bottom is showing the encrypted passwords. And you can go back through if you have the, the hash. To generate the, the hash to decrypt these, you will use the master password hashed with the email address or the username used as assault. Not displayed here, but um, sometimes when the system's logged in, or if you catch it just right, there will be a G local key. The G local key is actually that hash that we just talked about. You can then use that to decrypt anything that was generated by this user for their local. Any of the shared folders will use a shared key. Our next step will then to be logging out and then running the last pass again to see what we can see inside memory. So we're logged out and I'm closing the tab. And in this, we can see that we saw the process I 5068 and 5620. So we're just going to run those two processes. As you can see, the it still dumps out information because it's still available in memory. So we have the, we have the JSON file, the private keys, as well as the user config. And then we managed to pull out the uh, usernames and passwords from memory. Finally, what we're going to do is we're going to log back into LastPass and then we're going to reboot the system while LastPass is still logged in. So we're currently logged in. I'm just going to open the vault for the fun of it. We have the information. I'm going to close the browser and restart the system. So restarting the system killed our uh, Cobalt Strike connection, so we're gonna launch that again. Okay, now that we have the connections back again, and we're going to open Chrome again. As you can see, there's not as much information available in memory after the reboot. You get a little bit of the user config, and then you get the private key again. So to recap, what LastPass uh, Memory Scraper will allow you to do is, when the dashboard's open or just closed, you can possibly retrieve some of the clear text uh, usernames and passwords. The data, a lot of times when the dashboard is open, is uh, constant in memory then it's easily to scrape out. As it's being closed, uh, other, it frees up that memory or space, but doesn't overwrite it. So you, there's a possibility that you can actually retrieve it. Also, logging out a lot of times, again, you can still uh, grab the information out of memory as long as the data has not been overwritten. There are a few different values that are also stored in memory depending on when you run the scraper. So it's actually beneficial to run periodically uh, the nice thing to know is when you have the process ID of the process that's holding all the LastPass browser extension information, it's a lot faster 